receive a choice. It's not, you know, previously some people have seen it as very sort of, it's their end, their response, but they are always given a choice if they will respond to the light or not, and only if they don't respond. And it's not really a punishment, it's actually that if they don't, see if the earth is moving up and they don't want to go up with it, this really isn't the environment where they can grow. They can only make more karma for themselves. So it's actually a mercy that they're removed to another environment where they still have more opportunity to grow than they have here. And then at the same time, they're not holding back the rest of the planet. Mm -hmm. choices made by those live streams for whom the planet was created as a platform for learning. What has happened on many planets is that the original inhabitants, or sometimes not the original ones, because there may have been life waves that have ascended from a planet and then new life waves have come in. But what I mean is those who were created first to take embodiment on that planet so what has happened in some cases is that they have taken the planet into a downward spiral. And then other life streams are allowed to embody there, and it can be lower life streams like the fallen beings, or it can be those who are more evolved, and there's always a balance between the two. And then their role is to either stir up chaos by taking things to the extreme, as is the case of the fallen beings, or to inspire and demonstrate by example that you do not have to be bound by the mindset that created the downward spiral. As we have said, that mindset need not be what you would conceive of as negative or primitive. There are, in fact, previous civilizations on many planets that have been much more sophisticated and harmonious than what you see on Earth. They have just come to that point of still stand where the planet was no longer a platform for live streams ascending because they were standing still at a certain level. And so you who are the spiritual live streams that have come to Earth, you cannot override the free will of the, let us call them, original inhabitants. You understand that on Earth there were what we have called root races that embodied and some of them ascended. But those who initiated the downward spiral are the ones who must decide to break out of it. And they are also the ones who, to some degree, determine what fallen beings can embody on Earth. But they do this in a more general sense, that the lower their consciousness is, or the more resistant they are to change, the more we will tend to have to keep the fallen ones on the planet in order to create that disturbance that provokes people into rethinking their beliefs. But you need to understand that there is a, a correlation between the fallen beings who are allowed to embody on the planet and the more mature spiritual beings who are allowed to embody. So there is always a balance between the two so that the fallen beings cannot take the planet too far into the downward spiral. You understand?
understand what I'm saying, the original inhabitants who created the downward spiral are the ones who must decide whether the planet goes up or down. You, the spiritual people, cannot decide to override their free will, but neither can the fallen being. They attempt <coughs> to do so, but they cannot do it on a planetary level, meaning that even though a planet may be in a downward spiral that eventually could become or lead to the destruction of the planet, the fallen beings cannot actually bring about the destruction of the planet without the free will choices of the original inhabitants. They may seduce them, they may force them, they may do all manner of things, but they themselves do not have the authority to decide to destroy the planet, just as you do not have the authority to take it up higher. So, in a general sense, the original inhabitants depend, de decide the level of consciousness of the fallen beings who can embody. But when it comes to specific fallen beings of specific groups of fallen beings, you are the spiritual people are the ones who decide. And you decide in a very simple way. The law is, is that if a fallen being has a certain had a certain level of attainment before that being fell, then there has to be a spiritual being who reaches that same level of attainment before the fallen being can be taken. And so by raising your consciousness, you make it possible for us to remove specific fallen beings, even though you cannot this way remove all. But you can certainly remove the darkest or the most powerful or the most deceptive life streams by raising your own consciousness. You can also contribute to this process even before you reach that level of attainment by making the calls. And this is your authority as the spiritual people who have come to earth from the outside. So you cannot in the overall sense take a planet up or down, but you can in the more specific sense contribute to lessening the weight of the fallen beings that are pulling down the original inhabitants. Okay, I have another question uh, about the flow of energy. Uh, as the master said, uh, there was some time to release an amount of energy. Can you speak up a little bit? Uh, the master had some time to release some amount of energy on this conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday there was said that the energy is released through our chakras, actually through all of chakras, all of us. And uh, I personally, I'm not a much sensitive person and I don't much feel the flow of energy to me. And I, well, you know, there are some people who feel the flow of energy so much that they feel it like almost bursting the energy. And uh, does it mean that I'm not a good conductor for the energy, or <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, well, this is the question about you know, the, the flow of, to different people and different amounts. So, Mother Mary will answer this. While I, of course, understand your question, I also need to encourage you not to analyze and evaluate yourself this way. It is very individual what you experience or do not experience. There are many people who have had their third eye opened or have had other kinds of sensitivities without necessarily having a high degree of spiritual maturity or uh, mastery. So these outer abilities are not necessarily a clear sign of any kind of, a, of ability and that means that the absence of them is not a sign of a lack of mastery. It may simply be that your focus is somewhere else. It may be that some people are more focused on the physical octave and changes in the physical octave and are therefore not as sensitive to the energies. So you can of course develop this sensitivity, but I do not necessarily want you to focus too much attention and effort on this. It is, in fact, better, as 
as some people have realized, to see these kind of things as gifts. If you receive them, fine. But if you if you strive to attain them, then many people have tried to take heaven by force. And there are, in fact, many of the people who have certain clairvoyant abilities who have forced them either in this or past lifetimes because they desire to set themselves above others or feel that they were important or other human ambitions like this. So my answer really is do not worry about this. If you sense it, then that's good. If you do not, do not be concerned about it. Because by making the calls and being centered in the heart, you are having the effect. And so I also want to comment on the concept that we had a certain plan before this conference for how much energy could be released and that you could go beyond it. We always have a, what we might say, a low potential or high potential. But of course the low potential is still much higher than the activities of most human beings. So when you do come together at a conference, even the lowest potential is a very high release of light compared to people in the world. So do not underestimate that. But it is of course a delicate equation when you have 30, 40, 50 or more people who come together from many different physical locations and they do not know each other at the conscious level, but in some cases they have karma with each other from past lives. And so when you do come together at a conference, even though you may not be consciously aware of it, your four lower bodies start interacting with each other and your karmic patterns may pull you into certain reactions with other people. We have in previous Ascended Master organizations often seen how people could come together at a conference who had never met each other before physically in this lifetime and all of a sudden they could be in a heated discussion over something. It was an inconsequential discussion but both sides were completely convinced that it was absolutely necessary to prove their point to the other side. And this is an example of a karmic attachment between these people where there was something that didn't work out in a past life. And they had a desire to work it out. And now that they are together, they become so anxious to absolutely work it out, but they think the only way is to convince the other side. The way to work it out is, of course, to look at yourself and say, why do I have this attachment to convincing these other people, which I normally don't feel, and then you surrender it, you let it go, you make the calls on the transmutation of the karma or the energy, and you forgive. If you have this reaction with other people, it is because there's something you need to forgive. You need to forgive them, you need to forgive yourself. And so we cannot, of course, know how people will respond when they are brought together. We can, of course, predict how people's auras are going to stir up each other, but we cannot predict whether people will choose the higher road of letting it go, or whether they will choose to go in and reinforce these patterns. And so what we have fortunately seen in the last several conferences that we have given with this messenger present has been that the majority of the people have chosen to transcend their patterns and come into a greater harmony. In other words, the harmony of the group, the harmony of yourself, the goal of serving the Ascended Masters was more important than proving yourself right. And that is what makes it possible for you to manifest the highest potential for a conference where we can release much more light than we imagine. Or planned. And so at this particular conference you have achieved a very high level of that harmony, synchronicity, oneness that we look for. And as we have said before, when you get together in a group and give decrees together, there is a multiplication of these decrees. But 
the multiplication factor can vary, and it varies depending on the level of that oneness and harmony that you can achieve as a group. And so the higher that level of harmony, the more light can be released through your chakras. And we have, at this conference, truly achieved a very high degree of this. And I do not say this to cause pride, but I say it to cause a realistic assessment in you that you have been willing to set aside all of these lesser things. And really, it is not a matter of denying that there are issues to deal with, but it is a matter of not allowing an issue to become a downwards energetic spiral. So you understand that we are not encouraging you to try to create this harmony artificially by simply ignoring or denying any issue you have with other people. We are not saying that if two people come together at a conference or a group of people come together and you feel there's a tension, then you should say, oh, now we have to keep the harmony and ignore this issue. What we're saying is that there's a middle way where you do not ignore the issue, but where you are talking about it in a way that keeps your energies high, that keeps them flowing upwards, so that they do not start creating this downward energetic spiral. You will notice in all of your relationships how you have some people where you have created this downward energetic spiral, and you can teach yourself and you can use our decrees and invocations to free yourself from the energetic pull. And then you can teach yourself to always keep your interactions with other people above that level so that you don't create these energetic spirals. In fact, you have a right to say when other people come and want to drag you into such a spiral, you don't not need to say it out loud, but you can say in your mind that I don't want to be pulled into it. And then you do whatever is necessary and appropriate to avoid it. But there are many times where if you ignore an issue or gloss it over, it will still create an energetic spiral. And so it is good to attend, attempt to resolve it. But if the other person will not, is not willing to raise his or her energy so you can resolve it in a constructive manner without creating the downward spiral, then it can be valid for you to just withdraw and say, I'm not going to reinforce it. And so, truly, what we look for in a conference is that you, so to speak, create an environment that is as close to the ascended realm as possible. And in the ascended realm, of course, we are in a state of harmony. We're not in a state of sameness, but we are in a state of harmony that is far beyond what most people have ever experienced on earth and could even imagine. But by coming together and maintaining this high level of harmony and union, you gain a glimpse of how we interact with each other in the ascended realm. We, of course, do not play any of these games. We don't have these energetic spirals. We are always uplifting each other. And this is possible to achieve once you have reached a certain level of working through your own personal issues. Because after all, whenever you have a conflict with other people, the reason why you are in that state of conflict is that you have unresolved issues that pulled you into it. It may very well be that the other person also has unresolved issues. But if you had not had unresolved issues, the other person would have had to find somebody else to pull into his or her spiral, and you would have been passed by. And so, if you want to be free, if you want to transcend, you need to be willing to look at yourself. And because all of you who are here have been willing to already do that in yourselves before you came, you have then been able to achieve this higher degree of harmony, which 
always gives us intense joy when we see a group of people, or even two people, on earth who can achieve this and who can maintain it over time. We fully understand how difficult it is to maintain something like this over time. And it is especially difficult in your daily life. We understand that all of you, when you go from a conference where you have experienced this higher consciousness, you will be confronted with a test, most likely from the people closest to you, who don't realize what they are doing and are not doing it out of evil intention, but they will subject you to the test of whether you can keep that harmony. And so it is good to be aware of this, but it is also good to apply what I have given you here, that if you do fall below then you don't condemn yourself and analyze. You pick yourself up and move on. You, you think back to what you experienced at the conference. You go back into that frame of mind, even if you have been pulled out of it. That is the value of experiencing this higher harmony, is that it becomes your frame of reference. And so when you realize that something has pulled you below it, you can make that decision to raise yourself back up. This. <clears throat> what is carrier of emotions? What is carrier of thoughts? And what is carrier of our identity? I understood to a previous teaching that, that there is an electronic bed that, that wrappers like emotions are carried by free electrons. So maybe you have a little bit more understanding of that. Well, the electronic belt is a concept that we gave in order to give the visible impression that there is a part of your aura, the lower part of your aura, that contains the fear-based energies. So it is truly not as much of a belt as the entire lower half of your auric sheet that is this electronic belt. So what is the carrier of emotion is a specific type of energy that vibrates in that spectrum that makes up the emotional body on earth and it is of course the same with a mental and identity. You can play with words here and use words differently because it is not really so that there is a mental energy that is the carrier of thought in a sense that you have the energy and then the thought is projected onto it. It is more so that as the thought is projected, the energy that carries it further is sort of pulled out of its ground state and given a direction. And then it is this energy that then descends into the emotional where it can then again be reinforced with a new energy generated at the emotional level and this is then sent into the physical and affecting your conscious mind. I have a question about the atomic acceleration chair of Master Saint Germain. Can you explain more about how it works? And whether is possible for us in small groups to um, work with this chair. Saint Germain. You need to log into the idea that progressive revelation is progressive. And therefore, as Mother Mary explained with the wisdom of the Divine Mother, we are always giving people concepts that they can relate to with their given state of consciousness and then it is the hope that instead of taking them literally and turning them into a closed box, they will raise themselves up so that they no longer need the concept. So the concept of the atomic accelerator chair was given in the 1930s when very few people on the planet were able to even conceive of the process of the ascension as it really unfolds. They were only able to conceive of it in a more bodily, physical form, and many of them were not able to abstract from the physical body. Many were tied into the Christian ideas that at the end of time, Jesus will appear, and all of the physical bodies of all of the people who have died throughout history would be physically resurrected, and they would then exist in some heaven world as the physical bodies they had. 
And there were many people in the 1930s who could not free themselves to free their minds from this idea that the ascension had to be a physical process. So in the I Am movement, I was seeing the need to give people a concept they could relate to and therefore I presented the concept of the ascension in a much more physical way. I even gave the concept that it is possible to ascend physically. And in a sense it is possible to ascend physically in the fact that you can, you can dematerialize the physical body as the live stream is ascending, but this does not mean actually that the physical body ascends and now you are wearing a physical body in an ascended realm that resembles the physical body you had on earth. That, this is not a correct understanding of it, but it was based on the limited ability to abstract that people had at the time. In the ensuing decades, many more people have expanded their ability to abstract from these concrete physical images. And so, what I'm saying here is that the concept of the atomic accelerator chair was also a concept given to people at a certain level of consciousness. Of course, there are still people at that level of consciousness and embodiment, so the concept as such is not obsolete. But it is indeed obsolete for those of you who are able to abstract from this more physical, material view of it. There is no need to accelerate the physical atoms. The physical atoms of the body, even when you ascend, are not accelerated to the level of the ascended realm. The physical body, the physical atoms of the material world, as you see it today, will eventually be, we might say, accelerated when the entire sphere ascends. But this is still not a physical ascension, because it is actually that the atoms transcend the matrix that makes them atoms. They are accelerated into a higher state, an entirely higher thought matrix. Not a higher physical state in a linear way, but an entirely different thought matrix. And so, you will see that the teachings of the I Am movement were given at a time where people had this need, and they had this also great belief in technology and the ability of technology to reinforce these wonderful devices that would solve all problems and almost work like magic. And there was a need to, so to speak, feed that because that was where people's awareness was at. And that's why I gave certain teachings about these different devices that existed in the retreats of the masters and including the atomic accelerator chair. You have to understand that even in the Senate Master teachings and also in many other spiritual and religious teachings, we are always attempting to give a particular idea. But in order to give that idea, we must clothe it in an outer form that people can grasp with their current level of consciousness. And so, the wise student makes a distinction between the idea and the particular outer form. The concept and a particular form. And so, while I have given this concept of the atomic ac accelerator chair and described it in some detail, it was to stir people's imagination so that they would look beyond it, beyond the form, and realize that it is actually possible to accelerate your four lower bodies to an entirely new matrix. You are, however, not so much accelerating the bodies as you are accelerating the energy and the consciousness. But the acceleration is not a linear acceleration, where you take an actual physical atom and you accelerate it to a higher level of vibration. It is, as I said, if you actually free the energy from the matrix of the atom, you free your consciousness from the matrix of your thoughts and feelings. And it is the concept, again, embodied or just demonstrated by Jesus on the cross where he had to die physically for him to be reborn spiritually. It is the old matrix that has to die. It cannot be accelerated in a linear way. 
it is not that the matrix is just at a lower degree of perfection and it can be raised to higher degrees of perfection and then it can ascend. It is that the matrix has to be allowed to die so that the conscious you can free itself from identification with the matrix. So as you can hear between the lines here, those of you who are open to our newer teachings should just ignore the idea of the atomic accelerator chair because you, are, you have transcended the need for having that concept. It is not constructive to attempt to create a physical chair because if there was a mechanical, technological, physical way to make people ascend, then surely the fallen ones would long ago have created it and used it on themselves to force their way into the ascended realm where they could then start creating havoc as you see on earth. And this simply cannot be done. Two seconds after I close my eyes, I see a frozen pile of gold. Why is this? Saint Germain. Because you are tuning into the vibration, and therefore you can often see it even as a physical sensation. Many people have during meditation, for example, or other spiritual exercises, seen various colors of light. But many, many people who are spiritual today have seen the violet light because it is the closest to the physical in vibration and many people are able to tune into it and many people who have a true desire to transcend their old state, they can <coughs> tune into this energy and therefore they can even see it or they can sense it in other ways. And by sensing it, by seeing it, by absorbing it, it does help you raise your vibration in some way, even if you're not directly invoking the violet flame to a decree. But of course, a decree is a more powerful way to invoke the violet flame than meditation or other forms of exercises that are not as oral, where you do not speak the word. The spoken word is the most powerful way to invoke, invoke spiritual life. I have a question about fantasy things. There's a lot to do about uh, Nibiru or Planet X uh, on the internet and in the world. And uh, there's a lot of information with the Book of Revelations, of course, and other prophecies. Uh, how should we as uh, Ascended Master students uh, uh, deal with these uh, things, these prophecies? Saint Germain, as you deal with the Atomic Accelerator Chair, yeah. 